Boom! That's right, we're going to be taking a look at not one, not two, not three, but four Transformers in this review. Hopefully, though, it'll be somewhat quick-ish, uh, because really, we've sort of looked at uh, most of these before. Uh, in one form or another, so I'm going to go through them fairly quickly. Of course, Prime, Universe, Cliff Jumper, Tarantulas, Squeeze Play will be the one that we're probably going to focus on the most. Although, I do have some thoughts about Tarn here as well. It's a four for one review in the latest Gapa True review. Hey one, hey all, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, your most humble of hosts, Dennis Moulton, aka Gotbot. As always, please like, comment, share, of course, subscribe, and while you are at it, light them up, baby. Hit that notification bell, please, as it helps me out a ton and lets you know when content of all sorts goes up here on the channel. Check out Machinery of Man, The Everything Factor, all the groups that I'm either a mod or an admin for, as well as all of my social media links. All of that's in the description down below and also in the description down below. And if you're in a position to help the channel to grow, you can use the donate link, check us out on Patreon, see what we have to offer to you through spring. Or, of course, hit the join button at any given time and become a channel member. And this, of course, is a four-pack. Um, initial thoughts, I really wanted the squeeze play, and I like the mind white mold. I love the turn mold, uh, though I do see another use for this rather than as turn proper. Um, as for the tarantulas mold, splendid mold. Not sure about this coloration, we'll talk about it. And the chase mold being used here for Prime Cliff Jumper was an interesting choice that might be more effective, at least for me, than I thought it would be. Without any further ado, how about we head over to the table and take a closer look at all these guys. And yes indeed, this is the Versus 4-pack. And I mean, the Versus is rough because we have one Autobot from the Prime Universe being Cliff Jumper, and here's the artwork for him, who's taking on a Predacon from Beast Wars, being a very peculiar looking version of Tarantulas, as well as a G1 Decepticon being the Headmaster Squeeze play that I think a lot of us have won for a long time, to be honest with you. And right down at the end, perhaps the most nefarious of Decepticons here, being Cyberverse, Turn. And if you didn't watch Cyberverse, then the Turn from Cyberverse had this whole plan of uh, making this whole perfect Decepticon army kind of in his image. And not for nothing, but the Turn in Cyberverse is apparently like a clone of like the DJD leader, like the one that you probably know from the comics. And this clone became self-aware, started calling itself Turn, and started making others kind of in its image. I'm not really sure of all the intricate details, but that's kind of the short and dirty version of it. I tend to see this Turn as more of the perfect Decepticon. I'll talk about that when we get to him, though. Uh, so this is the front package. I kind of like the artwork. I sort of like that they put him up here. By the way, not for nothing, in behind here, there's a protrusion in the... Um, cardboard insert and behind that protrusion there's a little piece of tissue paper that has like accessories for all of these guys in it so if you get this set don't accidentally take the guys out and forget the accessories um there's a couple of squeeze play ones that aren't in that tissue paper and turns isn't in that tissue paper but for tarantulas for uh, cliff jumper and i think the hand blaster for squeeze play are all in there uh, so, you know, make it that what you will. 40th anniversary stuff here on the side, and 40th anniversary artwork on the side, and then on the back, of course, we have all of the product images. I mean, it's a box, it is what it is. We have this giant, giganto, two-sided set of instructions. Um, if you know the molds, I don't know if you really need these, maybe for squeeze play. In the interest of brevity, I'm going to try and go through these fairly quickly. And we're going to start things off with the Prime Universe version of Cliff Jumper, which of course is based on the Rescue Bot Chase mold. Uh, I looked at Rescue Bot Chase in episode 1139. I've done the transformation from robot to uh, vehicle in that review. So we're, we're going to do it in the opposite direction this time around. Um, I, and not for nothing, <clears throat> I have Chase here for a reason. His shoulders friction up. Behind the windshield there's a gray piece that has a screw in it and I've heard that if you tighten that screw because you find the shoulder friction a little loose that uh, it tightens it up. I can no longer turn that screw any tighter and the arms are no tighter. So um, it's an issue. This one over here is not bad. This one over here 
has zero friction. There's a little nub on that piece that's, a, I guess, supposed to act as like a stop, but it doesn't even touch it over here. Um, I'm hoping that's not the case with Cliff Jumper. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Luckily, the friction here is good enough that it stays up, but if it gets loose over time, then nothing is going to keep the shoulder up. And I find that a bummer. To me, that's poor design. You should have had a better way to lock that in. Let's see if it's better with Cliff Jumper. So I'm gonna take this guy out of it. And so the first thing that you'll notice is that this obviously is not Cliff Jumper's. <clears throat> you know what? I mean, I've heard so many types of cars used to describe him. The front of him is kind of like a Dodge Challenger and the back of him is kind of like a, a, a a Barracuda. He was a weird car. Um, so me personally, I'm not going to hold that against this because I'm not a car guy. Uh, you know, we got the little um, long horns, I suppose they are. I don't know what they're called. The horns on the front of the car. Um, and like, it's red and stuff. Like, I get it. But I understand the criticism that people will say it's not Cliff because it's not the right uh, alt mode. The accessories, I suppose you would say, are the same ones that came with Chase. Uh, this little one over here. Except this time, they're all just translucent and not painted. This one's like a little I don't know, horn, and this one's like a little light, I guess. Uh, and this is that grabby claw that comes with Chase. Again, I'm not belaboring this. We have four. I'm trying to be somewhat brief here where we've looked at this before. Let's do the transformation, and then we'll talk about scores for the guy very, very briefly. Uh, we should be able to begin by easily picking those up on the side. No problem. Um, then I'm hoping we can... Pick off the arms, thusly, and start to bring down the legs. And not for nothing, but the underside of the car is mostly this, which didn't leave a lot of robot mode stuff under the car. So we sort of have this opened up now. Uh, I'm going to just readjust the camera because I noticed that things are starting to go slightly off uh, frame. There you go, just a little adjustment. We split the legs. We can bring these now out on the side, and this is where things start to get kind of interesting. We bring that whole piece out, and we open that out, which is like a heel spur. And we should be able to, yeah, fold the leg in around, and then turn it. So I'm going to show it again, or try to show it again, on this side over here. We fold up the whole foot and do that. We begin to bring this all up on this red hinge in here and collapse it. And not for nothing, we should be able to, assuming I got all that done right, we should be able to, there you go. Fold the leg kind of in around that hinge and turn the knee that way, thusly. And those are the two legs done. Then in terms of the upper body, Again, this is what I was talking about earlier, so I'm going to mention it now. This here, people have said, if you have trouble with the arms here, the shoulders not kind of frictioning up and staying in place, if you don't hear the little, the little thoopy piece, uh, then tighten this. Uh, in doing this right now, I can tell you, bringing it up on this side, I felt the thoopy piece here. I did not feel it over here. I think I'm going to have the same issue, which is a bummer. We bring the chest down. We fold in that piece. And boom, in the end, here we have Cliff Jumper in his alt mode. Not for nothing, and maybe it's not perfect, but if you're going to do a stylized Transformers Prime face with a nose, I feel like that this is one of the more successful ones, because I look at it and I still think, yeah, that looks pretty much like Cliff. Okay, so the transformation is its pretty good. Again, I'm disappointed that the shoulders don't have a dedicated locking point, but I do like how there's an armature to move them up. I love the lower legs. I love how they furl and unfurl. I love the way the toes fold in to become the bumper and stuff. So I'm going to give that a, I don't know. You know what? I'm just going to talk about it a little bit and give them an overall score, and then we'll do a score for the whole set at the end. A little bit different, but again, for brevity's sake. Uh, the coloration here, not bad, honestly. Starting from the feet, working up. Yeah, the black on the toes, the red on the legs and shins. The thigh should be red, not black or gunmetal gray, but I like the gunmetal gray. Uh, the torso kind of looks about right. I, 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 the windshield or the roof, I guess, here should be split a little bit, but I'm okay with it being the way it is. I think the head is one of the better uh, updated heads. Then red on the shoulders, red on the forearms. 
the gray detailing on the inside, the gray bicep, all of that is right with the black hands, all of that is right. Um, the articulation for the guy, I mean, left, right, a uh, little up and down. Um, these will not go all the way around because of this on the back, but I mean, see, see the problem? Like there's nothing, there's nothing there to hold it in place. It goes up and around, um, elbow. People have said that they find this better than the chase. I can't at all agree, not my experience. I find this no better than the chase. No worse, but no better. Um, material certainly don't feel any better. The waist is what it is. Uh, the legs can go forward, back that far. Um, can they go out to the side? Yes, in terms of T-posing, I mean, this is about as good as you're going to get for the arms. The legs can go the whole way. Um, thigh swivel, knee, ankle tilt. I mean, like with Chase, the hindrance on this guy is the shoulders. They're terrible. Very, very bad design on the shoulders. Really, really, especially awful. Something that they shouldn't do. Uh, eight, I guess. He's, he's all right, but those shoulders are a real weakness. Second up in our list here is Tarantulas. And I looked at this version, the Legacy Evolution uh, Tarantulas, in episode 1005, about a year or so ago. And I love this mold. Maybe about two years ago, actually. And I absolutely love this mold. I think it's fan. Fantastic. Now, that being said, let's take Tarantulas out of it and focus on this oddity. So indeed, I say oddity. Let me just sort of move him more in frame there, uh, centered a little bit, if you will. And man, I gotta call this one an oddity because I didn't know where this coloration came from. So my understanding in doing some minimal research is that the inspiration for this was using the colors that the original prototype was cast in. So this is like literally when they you know, take the, like, the colors they have laying around and they do a prototype. Um, that's what this coloration apparently is meant to be inspired by. The head is not the tarantula's head that we're used to seeing from the animation or from the legacy one that I just showed. It's the robot mode head inside the mutant head. And apparently that coloration, though it's some nice metallic colors by the way, is meant to be an homage to uh, the way they, I guess the robot head was painted for the 10th anniversary release. It's such a weird homage. This is such a wild, out of left field reuse. Again, in episode 1005, we looked at the transformation going from uh, robot to spider. Now we'll see it in the other direction, going back from spider to robot. A couple of things worth noting here. First, underneath we have uh, his buzzsaw thing. This was in the tissue paper, as was his, uh, this piece here, the uh, crossbow, I suppose you call it. And just like with the previous um, tarantulas, you can put them together if you're so inclined to give you one, whatever this is, <laughs> whatever, whatever this is. Um, or you could have it as two separate uh, accessories. We can come here now and begin to bring the legs down. Uh, these feet are the biggest bane and bummer to kind of squeeze up underneath here, but once you do it, the whole thing goes up quite nicely. You have to have everything folded up and tucked away pretty perfectly, but it unfurls so nice when you go back to robot mode. Then we can take this piece off and, hmm, can we turn the waist yet? Maybe we can't turn the waist yet, I'm not sure. I think I gotta bring the arms out, to be honest with you. Uh, then the arms that are down underneath here, and these spider legs. The spider legs are kind of tabbed into the side. So you untab the spider legs. Now I'll say this about this iteration of the mold. For whatever reason, my biceps keep coming right off. I don't like that. I really don't care for, for that being, uh, being a bit of an issue, I gotta say. Uh, then we will, now be able to fold the or rotate the waist around we're going to take what's up over the head that piece and that comes down inside of here cut kind of down in the body more and then this goes up over and the tab here goes into the slot at the back right there straighten out those legs yes our boy has a backpack but you know what do you want to do bring down that arm 
bring down that arm. I guess kind of do what you want here with the legs in terms of bringing them in. Rotate the lower arms around and boom in the end here we have prototype tarantulas in his robot mode and you can see both lads next to each other here the transformation is still pretty splendid um it, you know i know i had a bicep that sort of worked itself off the mushroom peg but barring that taking that out of it, it, it you know, i've had it happen a couple of times with this copy so i'm hoping it's just my copy and not like a mold issue because it doesn't happen with this copy um so yeah, the transformation is still kind of brilliant, uh, works well. The legs are a little fiddly. Uh, the look of this guy, I mean, again, I guess based on the prototype colors, the metallic green and purple on the head, like it, it, it looks fine. It looks fine for a prototype taking him out of it so we can actually focus on this guy properly. Um, the articulation, again, we have all of the, the spider legs that can do what they want on ball joints, uh, and they stay on mostly well. Starscream Wife was fiddling with this guy and knocked one of the ball joint legs off, but they pop on. Uh, the head goes a little wiggle up and down, can go left and right. The arms, they can go um, all the way kind of out to the side. They can go really all the way around. Uh, there's a, as we know, a bicep swivel that's a bit iffy on if it wants to stay on. But then down here at the uh, elbow, we have a nice hinge to 90 degrees and not for nothing, but like that swivels. So like, there's a lot of movement in the arms, uh, even though the hands are just claws, so there's no movement there. We do have a waist on the guy, which I really, really like. Uh, he can do full uh, splits and not for nothing. I don't know if I said this or not. The arm can go all the way up to the side for T-pose. Um, we have very deep knee, obviously because of transformation. Uh, we have a thigh swivel built in here. I like that. Ankle tilt and down and forward, like forward and back. Um, but big feet, dude stands well. Um, it's a weird inclusion, but it's still a solid mold. It, this is so different though that I don't really see this as tarantulas. I, I can easily just rename this as another Predacon and it can be its own dude. I'm gonna say nine. I think that this is still excellent. I gotta kind of work on that, that, like that bicep just a little bit to see if that's a mold issue, but taking that out of it, because I think that's just a, an issue that I have. I don't think that's a widespread thing. I hope it's not. Taking that out of it, this is still a solid nine for a mold. It's fantastic. And now this was the comparison, man, that I was really, really waiting for uh, to see. This is, Thanks to our buddy Charlie, this is our custom, regular release version of Legacy Tarn. This is the one from the pack. This one is supposed to be based on like, I guess it's like Comic Folk IDW iteration, which is the, definitely the most popularized look for the guy. And this of course is based on the Cyberverse iteration of him. That said, uh, I do see this more as a version of the perfect Decepticon than I do anything else. Now Tarn I've looked at a couple of times and I don't know, but I've shown his transformation in both directions. So I'm only going to kind of gloss through it here very quickly um, when we do it. But like in terms of the tank, um, I mean, they both look good. Uh, granted, this one, keep in mind, has some custom uh, customization done on it. And not for nothing, I did look at the regular Legacy Evolution Tyrant in episode 1044. And I looked at the custom, like a tale of two Tyrants in episode 1157. So, yeah, I don't know, which tank do you like? I like the cohesiveness of this, but I kind of like the bombastic wild look of this. Okay, so with one turn out of the way, let's get this one back into his uh, robot mode, and then we'll talk about all of the details. I will note that this uh, particular iteration comes with the sword that uh, really was meant to uh, go with bludgeon, but like I'm glad that it's included here. Why not include a sword? I think it's cool. So we're gonna take the sword out, it has a little five millimeter peg that goes to a port there, or if you wanted to do it on this side, I guess you could, because there's a couple of five millimeter ports there as well. Uh, then we have this section up here, which of course is his cannons. Yes, they do still go all the way around. Um, this time they seem to be cast in a translucent orange, and I think the black is paint, if I'm not mistaken, and this bronzy color. Uh, I like the look of this, I really, really do, and I think the 
choice of translucent and dark color really pops. Taking this piece out of it and this piece out of it, I'm going to put those back together. Um, and of course I'm going to leave all that off for now, we'll go on his arm in just a little bit. So we're going to lay the accessories aside, they are what they are. Then we're going to come here and we'll begin by picking the legs off and picking the arms off. The arms tab in on the side of the thighs. We can now pick those out just a little bit. We're going to come here and we're going to pick all of that section up around and close it and straighten up this arm. We're going to do the same here. We're going to pick that off. We're going to fold the whole thing up and close it. And you can see the way the arm is here. We're going to straighten all of that out. We're also going to fold this piece kind of down around the arm and fill all of that in. And, not for nothing, let's even kind of like bring these up and out for now. Okay, let's do the lower body because that's definitely the easiest thing to do. All we got to do with the lower body is put out the feet, split the legs, bring the knee all the way up. Important to note that the knee has two hinges. Bring it all the way up. Then we can also take this piece here and lift it off and bring these down. By the way, just like with the regular turn, these can come off and become like batons for his hand or whatever, if you're so inclined to do it that way. So now we have all of that kind of open. We can also take the head and start to push that up through. And we're going to rotate that shoulder up. We're going to rotate this shoulder up. And we're going to bring the chest down. The shoulder pieces are in behind the chest. We're going to bring the head the rest of the way up. And we're going to make sure once we have the chest there that we push in the shoulder arms. Straighten up. Make sure I'm doing this right now. Yeah. Straighten up the elbow and the wrist orientation. Straighten up the elbow and the wrist orientation. And then finally we're going to take this piece and turn it all the way around. And bring it up on the back. And boom, in the end, here we have, oh, bring that down tab in his chest. But in the end, here we have Cyberverse turn in his alt mode. Yes, that was a very short and dirty version of the transformation that we've seen before. And yes, indeed, here we have both turns um, standing quite nicely with each other. Um, I think that the standard release, even with the custom work done here, is the more gritty, sinister looking one. I feel like this one is far more colorful though and really eye-popping and stands out. Now, not for nothing but on the show, uh, if you don't know, Karen had some battle damage, his left arm was gone and I do not recall him having a sword. So this, having both arms and the sword and lacking the battle damage is more like the perfect Decepticon clone than it is Tarn proper. What I would ideally like to have is a second one of these to flank this guy. So I could have Tarn proper with a couple of uh, clones that are perfect Decepticons. So I'm going to take this guy out of it. L the transformation is still a 10. I love it. I think it's a brilliant transformation. The sword here fits in his hand nicely and it can go on his um, on the middle of his back. No problem. Um, in terms of coloration based on the show working our way up the purple on the feet and then the dark blue and stuff on the legs, arguably that should probably be a grayish color, but I like the blue. Uh, the thighs, uh, being gunmetal gray, I think black, but gunmetal gray is okay. At the very top here where we have this red up by the hip, I think that red should probably be a little bit highlighted with pink. Same on the torso here, some of these red highlights should be pink. The gold on the torso kind of mimics the yellow um, on the show. The Decepticon logo here is fine. The uh, purple kind of up on the sides here is mostly fine, but the chest is a little bit different than it was on the show. Uh, the head is pretty good, what with the gray lower jaw and stuff. It's not perfect, but it's definitely in keeping an homage to the show. Let's put it that way. Uh, and the articulation, again, for this mold, left, right, up, down. Uh, these go all the way around well out to the side. The only real limit is if you take the arm forward, it can't go out here. That is one little bummer. Uh, elbow to 90 degrees, or elbow or slightly over 90 degrees. We have a bicep swivel. We have a wrist rotation. Fingers open and close. Um, we have a free-flowing waist, even with the sword back here. Like, the waist is very, very good, very free-flowing. Uh, the 
Legs, they can still go all the way up to the side, uh, all the way forward, all the way back. Knee to 90, a little over 90 degrees. Uh, thigh swivel, ankle tilt, and a uh, rocker backward and forward. I mean, last year, uh, if this guy wasn't like my number one transformer for what I picked up, my personal list, he was well up there. I think that this was a tremendous mold in Legacy Evolution. I'm okay having it again. Like I said, I'd kind of like to have a, another version of Tyrant. Either another like mainline version of Tyrant so that my custom in the mainline can sort of flank this guy or another version of this guy to flank my mainline. I would kind of like another version of this guy to flank my mainline. Um, if anything, I think this one also feels a little bit tighter in terms of tolerances than my mainline version. So. Not for nothing, I'm going to say that this guy's 9.5. So far we've had an 8, a 9, and now a 9.5. And that takes us to the last member of this set. That's right, it is Squeeze Play. Or you might know him as Crash Bash. In fact, in Titan's Return, we got this little lad, which is Crash Bash. Essentially, it was the head of Squeeze Play, released with the, like a little body thing. I guess. The actual mold for Squeeze Play is essentially the Mind Wipe mold. A lot of people had problems with the Mind Wipe mold and didn't really like it. I always did. Now I looked at Mind Wipe a long time ago in episode, get this, 173 in September of 2016. So it was a long time ago um, and I liked it. I, like I scored him fine and not for nothing. Because this is essentially a reuse of this, I'm going to show the transformation going from weird alt mode back. Yes, this would be a bat mode and yes, this isn't exactly the same transformation, but it's close enough that I can kind of mention a couple of the differences as we go here. If anything, I think that this is better. I think he probably wears it a bit better than Mind Wipe, and I already like it as Mind Wipe. However, before we look at that comparison, let's look at the two Titan Masters very briefly first. So, neither one of these really does a great job at capturing um, the, I guess, the robot version of Locos. Locos should basically have a silver face much like the Titan's Return version has, which is this version over here on this side, that's mostly purple, or fuchsia, I guess. And his lower legs from the, really the whole waist down should be blue. So, when we look at the one that came in the box set over here, his face is more of a periwinkle than it is a silver. His torso is black, his thighs are that weird beigey gray color and his lower legs are blue. Uh, the thighs really needed to be pinned. They're, they are so super duper loose. In fact, there's a hole through the torso, through the pelvis, where obviously a pin was supposed, I would guess, to go. Um, I thought about just changing the legs, but this guy actually has nubs on his uh, pelvis that the lower legs fit over, as where this guy the nubs are on the legs, so they're not really interchangeable, uh, which is weird. You'd have to take like the entire Titan Master and change it. Like you wouldn't be able to really swap parts. They're just not engineered that way, which is weird. You'd figure it'd be the exact same mold, but whatever. Um, they have about the same articulation, but like I said, as I'll show in a moment, the one that came in the four pack is rough. So neither of them really look the part. I think that the one from 2016 is tolerance a little bit better, but I'm going to just take him out of it. And not for nothing, but like, look how loose these legs are. Like that's, there's almost no friction there. And while the arms are fine on their ball joints, when I take these legs off, you can see that there's a, there's a hole there. And the nubs are on the, the parts of the legs here. It's not like that with the other one. So I don't, I don't even know how you would really, he stands okay, but like, it doesn't take anything for him to fall over. In terms of them looking like the head of squeeze play, I mean, take your pick. Uh, this one over here is the Titans Return one from 2016. This one over here is the one from the four pack. The four pack one is definitely more in keeping with G1 and the Titans Return is definitely a little bit stylized and a slightly different color. But in terms of quality of overall Titan Master, I think the Titans Return one from 2016 is just the better Titan Master. Not necessarily the better looking, but the better Titan Master. We'll see both of these on the body once we get the body in robot mode. 
And speaking of the body and whatnot, let's do that transformation. So in essence, we still had the Titan Master in the center here. Uh, close that up. This is very tight, by the way. I always said that on my wipe that center of the torso looked kind of like a coffin and it made sense. Um, it still kind of has that look sorta kind of to it here. Um, but I, I don't have any issue with it. This head uh, was loose and packaged. You had to attach it, but it attaches exactly the same way as Mind Wipe's bat head does and still goes to the back. Uh, the shield piece on Mind Wipe's arm is the same thing here, except this is much smaller. Um, and not for nothing, the legs this time come down and become arms with claws on them. I like to have them at this orientation because I find it's the best for articulation. Uh, but of course with Mind Wipe, these are still the legs except they open out to become bat wings and I believe they might even tab in down here on the side. Uh, the robot mode arms are still the legs of uh, the alt mode. And I mean, if you wanted to, I guess you could. I think that this is what you had to do with um, Mind wipe, but you don't do, do it with this guy. You can bring the legs down underneath if you want, but I'm pretty sure they're supposed to stay up for him. Um, I mean, it's a weird monster-ish mode. It is what it is. The head doesn't do anything, which is a bit of a bummer. Uh, I guess because these are the legs, you sort of have a shoulder up here that's really the hip. And depending on how you orient the legs, you kind of use the knee as an elbow. You can kind of use the ankle tilt as a wrist, the feet are the claws that open and close. So like, you got the option there. You can put his blaster back here. I mean, it is what it is. The legs are the ball jointed shoulder. So all the way forward, all the way back. No knee or nothing, of course. It's, you know, it is what it is. It's a weird little alt mode, but like, I like it. I, I absolutely dig it. Let's get into the transformation and see how that goes. So we're gonna take that shield piece off and I'm actually going to, I thought I was going to fold that up. There we go. It's gonna fold that in. Then we're going to take this head and it untabs. It just kind of comes up and frictions in. A little tab there goes into a little slot right there, uh, just like the bat head did. We're just gonna bring that down there. Then we're going to, actually I'm not gonna bring that in yet because I want to actually rotate the hips down and straighten that out. Rotate the hip down and straighten that out. Straighten these out and turn at the knees. Or if we were doing mind wipe now, we would fold the wing around and peg it in here on the back of the leg. We're going to open out these feet. On mind wipe, there's a whole foot piece that is tucked up behind the wing that just comes down as one piece. I prefer this with the heel, the toe, to give us toe and heel tilt. And now we have an ankle tilt as well, so I like that. Um, these weird pieces here are so strange. Like, I guess they just come up here on the back, but I, I, I guess it's because of the look of the guy, but I'm like, I don't know why these are even here, really. They don't really serve much of a purpose that I can discern. We open out the arm. We rotate at the bicep swivel. We bring out the hand. We open out the arm. We bring out that hand. Bring the arm down, and again, rotate at the bicep swivel. And though headless, in the end, boom, here we have Squeeze Play in his robot mode. And not for nothing, um, here he is with the shield on his arm and the blaster in his hand. I found it a little loose in his hand, but you know what? The blaster works just fine on his arm. I like that blaster, by the way. Uh, transformation is... Very easy, but at the same time, there's enough that moves that I, I think it's interesting. I like how the like legs of the monster mode become the arms of the robot mode, and the arms of the monster mode become the or yeah, the arms of the monster mode become the legs of the robot mode. I like that how the body kind of turns around. Uh, in terms of the uh, I guess the headmaster uh, gimmick, I'm gonna go in a little bit closer because I want you to see what both of these kind of look like on the body of the guy. Do you prefer that look with the 2016 Titans Return version? Uh, and not for nothing, and I don't know if it's coming across, but this kind of fuchsia pink is just slightly different than what's here and on the legs. Uh, not enough that I don't think you'd notice it. Like, if you want to go this route, I think you're fine. But it is slightly different. So do you prefer that? Or do you prefer kind of the stock head, um, you know, that he kind of comes with? I, it, there's arguments for both, to be perfectly honest with you. I don't know. I, I like both. I like neither. 
They're the same to me. So let's get into the scores for this guy. Uh, and I'm actually going to give this guy scores because this is definitely a new character and stuff. Like, it, I think he deserves it. So Transformation, I think, is a 9. Uh, I think it's quite good. I, I really enjoy it. Coloration, the use of this beigey color. And, like, this is plastic. This is paint. This is paint. This is paint. So, like, it's a specific choice. It's weird. The original... <coughs> I don't know if the original... Like, when I look at pictures and stuff, I feel like that the original was more gray, but I don't know. It's a weird color, but I don't hate it. It's very strange. Uh, in terms, though, of the pink, maybe that should be a little more purpley. Uh, the blue, maybe a little deeper of a blue. <coughs> but in general, based on its comparison to, like, and we don't, he wasn't in the cartoon, and the comics coloration is always weird, so I'm kind of comparing it to the G1 toy in this case. I, I, I kind of like this more. I feel like it's a little... Brighter, louder, feels more like what we would have probably seen his colors be in the cartoon than being very true to the deeper colors of the G1 toy. Um, I don't know. Transformation, I, I said, I think was a 9. I'm going to say the look is a 9. And the articulation for the guy, we have a head that goes left, right, little wiggle. Uh, the arms, they can go all the way around, out to the side. We have an elbow that's very, very deep. Um, oh, I didn't mean to transform that back. My bad. Very, very deep. Double, double hinged, I guess. Guess. Uh, nothing at the wrist, other than it can go back. Um, do we have a waist? Oh yeah, by the way, this should also come up on the back and it tabs in. I didn't do that. Uh, waist, that's cool. I mean, T-pose out to the sides, no problem. Oh, man. Come down, hip. Hips out to the side, no problem. Uh, thigh swivel. Really, it's uh, below the knee swivel. We have a knee to 90 degrees. Actually, we have a double swivel there, I think. I think it's below the knee and above the knee, if I'm not mistaken. Um, toe, heel, ankle tilt. I don't think I could want more from it. Honestly, I, I really I really like this. I'm going to say articulation and gain a 9. Overall, he's a 9. So the set, in the at the end of the day, is really quite great. So, for me, I think the best mold in here is probably the Tarn mold, because I love it. Uh, I, the one I'm happiest to have is uh, definitely Squeeze Play. The Tarantulas is an unexpected surprise that I like more than I thought I would, and the Prime Clip Jumper is exactly what I expected for a Prime Clip Jumper using this mold. We had an 8 for the Cliff, we had a 9 for Tarantulas, a 9 for Squeeze Play, and a 9.5 for Tarn. Overall score for this set gotta be a 9. Is it a necessary set? No. Is it a rewarding set? Yes. And I guess that's why I am able to score this highly, and that's why I'm glad to have it in my personal collection. And here we are once again. So let's kind of run through these very quickly. So I think the Cliff Jumper is a serviceable prime Cliff Jumper. I've never been too into the character because he had, like, was so fringe in the cartoon, being in that first episode and then, like, a flashback episode. There may have been a third one when he was the zombie and stuff. But, like, Cliff, to me, is one of those niche characters that has a cult following but wasn't big in the fiction. Uh, I understand a lot of people will have a problem with him not being the correct type of vehicle. For me... I'm not a big car guy. To me, they all kind of look alike. So this is serviceable to me. I still don't really care for the shoulders of this mold. Um, and I don't care for kind of relying on them having friction. As I said, I don't find that the little nub that's supposed to get the arms in place really works all that well. Luckily, the friction does work well. I hope it holds up over time. Then we get to Tarantulas. Uh, this is another splendid use of a splendid mold. Uh, very weird that they would specifically be like, hey, here are the prototype colors, and here is the coloration of the robot mode head inside of the mutant head, a la the 10th anniversary version of Tarantulas. It's a weird Tarantulas. Great mold, very odd inclusion. Definitely the weirdest out of it, but functionally, it works great. Works just as well as the original, which I also love. Then we have Squeeze Play. 
Uh, a lot of people have an issue with this being the Mind Wipe Mold. I love the Mind Wipe Mold. I haven't had any issues with it. I'm sorry if you have. Is it a bit small? Yes. But I feel like this guy is a little bit bigger or wears the mold a little bit better even than Mind Wipe. I feel like this is the superior use of it, to be fair. Uh, the weird kind of yellowed gray kind of color is very much a throwback to G1 I think because when I think of this character I kind of think of that weird color but it's an odd choice especially since some of it is plastic color and some of it is actually paint color um weird alt mode great bot um in terms of the head I, I kind of like the little titan master head I don't want to say better than the one that's included here, but the one that's included here really needed to be pinned at the hips because the legs and the hips are really loose on the Titan Master. I don't know. Maybe I'll use the Titan's Return one. Time will tell. And then we get to Tarn. I think Tarn here is a better representation of the perfect Decepticon. He has two arms. He doesn't have the battle damage. Truth be told, I kind of like to have a second one of this Tarn to flank my um, custom Tarn, which... Not for nothing, and funny enough, the Cyberverse term was still supposed to be pay based on that comic, like, leader of the DJD turn. Really weird the way the fiction sort of overlaps there. But yeah, to me, this is more perfect Decepticon. Great set. I don't know if it's uh, going to be a necessary set for everyone. I'm sure that the star of it is squeeze play. But great mold, great mold, great mold okay mold. That's my take. Make of that whatever you will. I appreciate you guys coming by giving me some of your extremely valuable time. I do know how important it is to you. If you're in a position to help the channel to grow, you can use the donate link. Check us out on Patreon. See what we have to offer to you through spring. Or of course, hit the join button at any given time and become a channel member. While you're at it, hit the subscribe button. Stick around. Have some fun with us here on the channel. And don't forget, man, not for a moment, not for a second, that somehow, some way, each and every single day, you right there you do make a difference in the world, and I look forward to the next time that you and I get together to have another visit, either in the live streams on Thursday nights at the stop-motion premieres, or the old-fashioned way right here inside the videos.